Throughout the ages, there existed a belief among the inhabitants of Earth. It was a tale from the time before they ventured among the stars, before they soared through the skies. The story went that if one were to witness a falling meteorite as it blazed through the atmosphere, they could make a wish and it would be granted. The world known as Terra Prime had undergone significant changes since those ancient times. It now stood as the hub of an expansive empire, spanning over 90 stars and a thousand worlds, including planetoids and even a colonized rogue planet. While they had refrained from instigating many wars, piracy remained a persistent issue that the human armada had to contend with. Their medical advancements had progressed to the extent that doctors now primarily operated as technicians, maintaining the machines that diagnosed, treated, and healed various human ailments. Furthermore, humanity had successfully restored their cradle to the lush, green world it had always been destined to be. However, their journey had not been without its challenges. They had witnessed the loss of almost a quarter of marine life, an environmental catastrophe they had taken significant efforts to reverse. Additionally, the revelation of alien life had sparked several large-scale conflicts, leaving lasting scars such as the radioactive scar of Delhi and the salted wasteland of the Estonian desolation. Nevertheless, they had learned and evolved, uniting as one people with diverse ideas, ultimately joining the larger intergalactic community known as the Alliance, which comprised around 40 different species inhabiting the Milky Way. When the invasion of Alliance space by the realm began, many feared that even the combined might of the Alliance would be insufficient to repel the aggressors. The Alliance had never before engaged in a unified war, and most of the species had previously forged treaties in anticipation of potential internal conflicts. The Rhone, however, operated differently, having never joined the Alliance, instead establishing their own distorted parallel society where their own kind reigned as absolute masters, subjugating other species according to their perceived utility. The Rhone boasted a formidable fleet of a hundred thousand vessels, sourced from the resources of the worlds they had subjugated. The Alliance, on the other hand, possessed a similar number of vessels, albeit of various styles. The Yorl preferred agile ten-man corvettes for swift strikes but with limited firepower. The Baylor favored their colossal dreadnoughts, possessing enough firepower to rend any opposing vessel in twain. The Farron favored medium destroyers and frigates, not as imposing as dreadnoughts but still packing significant firepower and being more cost-effective to produce, allowing them to field a greater number than the Belor. During the initial battle, the Belor dreadnoughts proved effective, decimating many of the primary enemy destroyers. However, being large targets themselves, several Belor vessels were swiftly destroyed. The Farron battleships also performed admirably, while the Yorl corvettes played a pivotal role in neutralizing several enemy ships. Despite these efforts, the battle was not unfolding in their favor. The Balor commander leading the fleet had initially held back the human vessels, presuming they would serve as distractions to the other Alliance members. Only after the fourth dreadnought had fallen did he permit the humans to engage in the battle. Then came the humans. Alongside the pirate corsairs, whom they had somehow coerced into service, were the human carriers. These carriers appeared massive, yet were lightly armed with point defense weapons. When they released their payload, however, few dared to underestimate them. They disgorged thousands upon thousands of fighters, small craft equipped with a main energy weapons platform and a handful of termites, specialized bombs designed to breach a vessel's hull and detonate inside, inflicting greater damage than conventional ordnance. The vessels themselves were visually striking, featuring a central main engine and eight wings pointing in primary and secondary directions, resembling an ancient navigational compass. 
their vivid yellow, orange, and red hues added to their captivating appearance. They were known as the Swift Comets. A thousand fighters streaked toward the Rhone fleet at 86% the speed of light, a velocity previously believed unattainable by sublight engines. They maneuvered amidst and through the wreckage of ships, effortlessly outpacing and outmaneuvering any opposition the Rhone could muster. The termites struck relentlessly, causing havoc by disabling warp and sublight engines, compromising control rooms and disabling primary and secondary armaments with ease. Point defense systems found themselves futilely targeting vessels that were barely registering, as these same vessels had already completed their strafing runs and were preparing for subsequent passes. That day, the humans lost two dozen personnel, six of whom were from a Corsair struck by an errant energy blast. The Rom lost an entire fleet. The tide of the war swiftly turned. As the Alliance fleets transitioned from a defensive posture to liberating Rom thralls, the humans became renowned for their prowess. More than that, they became synonymous with triumph, effortlessly dismantling Rom dreadnoughts and frigates alike. The humans dispatched their fighters to every theater of conflict, gracing every Rom held world. Sometimes they disseminated psychological warfare propaganda, other times they showcased their might against the Rom, and sometimes they simply displayed solidarity with the oppressed. They deployed termites onto Rom barracks, military communication relays, and supply depots, or at times supplied arms and sustenance to the native populations, departing before the Rom could respond. Whenever those distinctive human fighters appeared, the populace understood that their lives as slaves were soon to be over. The humans liberated my people after four years of war. By then, their fighters had become legendary on numerous planets. Back on Earth, the humans held a belief that when one glimpsed a shooting star, their wish would come true. Throughout the galaxy, a hundred races had now adopted a similar superstition. Now, at the sight of a swift comet, one's wish had already been granted. 